This video is sponsored by Squarespace. If you're interested in an easy to make yet unbelievably stunning website or online store, Squarespace has you covered. More on that later. There will come a time in every photographer's life when they take a banger photo in a horizontal aspect ratio, and they'll have to make a decision. Do I crop this photo into the vertical 4x5 ratio to maximize my screen space on the Instagram app, or do I just go ahead and post it even though it means the photo being super small in the feed? What if I told you there was a way you could have both? What is up people, Dunna here, and today I'm gonna to show you how you can split pictures to make seamless multi-posts on Instagram. But before I get into that, how do you like to split pictures like this for Instagram? Leave a comment below, and while you're down there, hit that like button. This has become a super popular technique recently and for good reason. First of all, it gives you somewhere to put your horizontal photos while still being able to show them off at a larger size. Second of all, it's a cool way to show more detail in a shot. And third, and possibly most important, if you post multi-posts, aka carousel, Instagram will potentially show them to people more than once. What I mean by this is, let's say I'm scrolling through Instagram and I come across my friends Becky and Chris, they posted a photo, but I'm just mindlessly scrolling so I push right past without double tapping like a bad friend. Because Becky and Chris are super smart and they make multi-posts, Instagram may show me the other photo from that post later on as I scroll through my feed. And I'll definitely double tap it because it's probably something super dope like coffee or shelves or a chair. This increases the probability that your posts will be seen by your followers. Rather than just having one shot, Instagram gives you multiple. Okay, so now that I've convinced you how awesome this whole idea is and how it can get you 10,000 followers overnight. Oh, oh, that's not how it works. Okay, well, I'll show you how to do it anyway. Quick disclaimer, I'm gonna do this in Adobe Photoshop, but if you take the same principles and techniques and apply them to whatever software you use, this will work like a charm. Okay, so a very important starting point is that we're gonna need a photo. So let's take this one with a bunch of my coffee stuff and start with that. It's taken in a horizontal three by two aspect ratio, and that's how it comes off the sensor of my Sony a6500. First, I'm gonna do a quick edit by slapping on one of my presets and tweaking it a bit. The preset freshly ground beans seems kind of fitting, so let's go with that. Next, I'm gonna crop it in such a way that it'll be prepared for the split. If you want, this part can be done once we get into Photoshop as well, but I find it nice and easy to do inside Lightroom. Knowing that I wanna split this photo into two photos, each being five by four vertical, I'm gonna choose my crop tool and make it into a 16 by 10 crop. If you know your math, you'll know that this also is five by eight, which is gonna allow us to do two photos side by side that are both five tall and four wide. Once we're happy with the crop, we're gonna right click, hit edit in Adobe Photoshop. On the left hand side of Photoshop, you'll find the crop tool. And if you hold down on that, you'll find the slice tool. Click and drag from outside the photo to create a slice. Don't worry about getting it right in the center yet. We're gonna fix that later. The important thing here is that you're dragging from way above the top all the way to way below the bottom so that it takes up the entire vertical length of the photo. Once you have a slice that takes up the vertical space with the slice tool still selected, you can drag the right side of the line until the slice snaps to the center. If you're having trouble finding the center, sometimes it can help to turn grids on by hitting Command apostrophe or control apostrophe on PC, you can customize the grids in preferences, under guides, grids, and slices, So now we've got our slices made and all that's left to do is to get them out of Photoshop and into Instagram properly. But before we do that, let's take a second to talk about this video's sponsor, Squarespace. First off, I've been using Squarespace for a long time now and I've made several different websites with them. They empower people like you and me by giving us the tools to bring our ideas to life. With Squarespace, you can get a domain, build a site, sell things online and market your brand. 
It's actually so easy to make an incredible website with their award-winning templates that are built as a starting point for a wide range of different projects. One of my favorite things about Squarespace is how easy it is to update and change your website since you need zero knowledge of fancy coding. And if you have any trouble, they have fantastic 24 seven customer support and they always put on webinars and have different help guides to get you going. I recently also started using their Squarespace email campaigns for my Dunna Did It notification squad. Email campaigns are a great way to stay connected to your community and your customers. So if you've been thinking about making a website or an online store, make sure to check out the link in the description to head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch your site, go to squarespace.com slash it to save 10% on your first purchase of a website or domain. Okay, now that you're fully empowered to rock your website, Let's export these photos. We're gonna head to the file menu, choose export, and this is the important bit, we're gonna choose save for web. Down in the image size section, change the height to 1350. This is Instagram's maximum height before they need to shrink your image. If you wanna see a video I did all about that, click the link up here. On the left hand side near the top, click the slice selector tool. At the bottom we can zoom so that you can see the whole image if you need to and you'll notice two slices. Selecting either of the slices, in the top right we're going to choose JPEG and turn the quality up to 100. Now select the other slice and repeat the same thing in the top right. Then click save and choose your location you want to save it to. Make sure that all slices is selected at the bottom. Now go find that location on your computer and there should be a folder with two files in it. Transfer those files to your phone using whichever method you prefer as long as it doesn't compress the files. I'm gonna be using AirDrop in this case because I'm an all Mac guy. Open up Instagram and click the upload button and choose the photo that will be the left photo on your multi-post. This is very important. Click the little expand button so that Instagram stops trying to crop your photo into a square. You need to do this before you select the second photo because it won't let you otherwise. Once you've done that, click the little button that looks like two squares stacked on top of each other and this will enable multi-post mode. Then you can select your second photo and click next. Now you can see the two next to each other with a line in between, but this will be gone when you post. Write your caption, do your tags and such, and then post it. Bam, you got a super sexy multi-post. Do you have another method you use to do the same thing? Maybe just on your phone? Leave it in the comments below and on your way down, hit that like and subscribe button to see more content like this. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. It's like 10.30 PM, so I'm drinking tea. But I just keep wishing it was coffee.